How about over there? Come up with that undocumented estimate because if you look at there, it's an estimate. Yep. How, what's the parameters of right. errors? Right. 20%, 30%. How did you come up with right. an estimate? So uh, the Pew Hispanic Center um, has a team of demographers that kind of looked at U.S. Census data. And um, you can actually go on their website and download the report, and they look at the 2008 numbers. Um, and I, I, don't, uh, I can't tell you the exact methodology off, offhand, but what they did look at was they, they relied on uh, U.S. Census estimates of the... Um, the legal or the lawful immigrant population in the state, they compared that to the foreign born population in the state um, and then subtracted uh, or the non citizen, they looked at the non citizen population and then they looked at the uh, lawful immigrant population and kind of subtracted and came up with an estimate of what the undocumented immigrant population. Uh, would be. It does have a variance, and actually in the Pew Hispanic Report, they have, a, um, they have the statistical variance. Um, and I think for Utah, it was, they, they thought it was somewhere between 100 and 120,000 undocumented immigrants, and then relied on that middle number as their estimate. Yeah. Is there any expectation of when the uh, Oklahoma court decision is going to come out, or is that just happening here? Well, some folks in the room probably know the Tenth Circuit much better than I do, especially people who uh, practice law here. Um, so I don't know. I think it could come any day because it was argued and submitted in May of this year. Um, I don't know if anyone else has a better sense of how long the Tenth Circuit takes to uh, issue its opinions. So I guess we don't really have a firm guess. It could be any day. Um, it could be up to a year. Somet sometimes, you know, courts of appeal take even a longer than a year to actually issue an opinion. How about in the back over there? Two-part question. Yeah. Um, on Capitol Hill, who are the strong supporters of comprehensive immigration reform? And conversely, who are the strong opponents? Second part of the question is, any possibility of getting these folks together as real problem solvers as um, uh, old uh, political bedfellows, maybe, much like Ted Kennedy and Orrin Hatch, in order to uh, bring about the most significant legislation we've seen in about 23 years? Yeah, I think it's a great question. Um, the chief proponents, uh, now, now that Senator Kennedy has passed away, he was a big proponent of immigration reform. Um, in this, on the Senate side, uh, Senator Chuck Schumer uh, from New York has kind of taken the lead in crafting the legislation, um, and he's spearheading right now the development of the bill, which no one expects them to reveal or introduce until uh, next year. Um, other proponents in the past, uh, Senator John McCain has kind of been a leading Republican proponent of immigration reform, but um, I think he's kind of learned a bit of a lesson from his last attempt at it, and it'll be interesting to see uh, how willing he is to compromise and come up with a bipartisan bill. On the House, I, I think the Senate, uh, more, most people's focus is on the Senate, because it does seem, in, with today's makeup of Congress, things kind of get decided in the Senate because of their 60-vote threshold uh, to prevent filibusters. And so for almost any major legislation, you really need to reach the 60 votes uh, to move it through. And so it's going to be a really tough fight on the Senate side. On the House side, there tends to be much more uh, support um, among Democrats. There's very, there seems to be very little support among House Republicans for uh, comprehensive immigration reform, but among the uh, leading Democrats are Zoe Lofgren, who's the chair of the Immigration Subcommittee. She's a congresswoman from um, California, the San Mateo area, um, and then, uh, or actually just south of San Mateo, I'm forgetting the area, but she's kind of, she has an immigration attorney background, so kind of brings a wonkish quality to the work. But you also have uh, Representative uh, Luis Gutierrez from Illinois, uh, who's kind of held hearings around the country trying to build the case for immigration reform, and he's really uh, quickly becoming a major face for the immigration reform movement on the House side, while Zoe Lofgren is playing more of a policy uh, formulation role. Strong, strong yeah. opponents. Yeah. Yeah, I think on the House side you're going to see um, more polarization 
Um, and you're gonna, I don't know if you'll even uh, see a single Republican on the House side willing to compromise uh, and come up with a solution uh, for immigration reform. I think you will see some of that on the Senate side. I think the health care reform has been really informative and illustrative. It's like the first major reform um, under the Obama administration where it's been, he's really been put to the test. And if you think the health care reform has been ugly, you know, immigration reform is going to be insane. And so, um, you know, at this point, what have we seen in terms of bipartisanship on health care reform? Um, one lone senator from the state of Maine, Olympia Snow, who we're not even sure is going to vote for the final bill that the Senate uh, passes, but has at least uh, thrown herself into the yes camp on health care reform. Um, I don't know that um, we'll see those same moderate Republicans kind of stand up. It'll be interesting to see how McCain... Um, you know, plays that, that moderate role, that broker role. Um, and then uh, you also have the problem of uh, moderate Democrats in the U.S. Senate who are by no means a certain vote on uh, creating a path to legalization. And many of them have already expressed major reservations with kind of creating that type of um, legalization path. So uh, I don't know how you get to 60 votes on the Senate side, quite frankly. Um, and, you know, the health care reform uh, debate has been really informative. The other thing is immigration reform is not even the next priority. Uh, President Obama and leaders in Congress have talked about tackling climate change and energy policy and regulating the financial industry, and so who knows exactly when we get to immigration reform. And then certainly the closer we get to the midterm elections, the more people are scared of their own shadows. So you're not going to see a lot of bold, courageous moves as you get closer and closer and to that date. being challenged within his own party from the right wing. Yeah, he sure is. All right, are there any other questions? Well, thank right. you Vic, so much. I really appreciate it.